Hey class, I would like to talk to you for a moment about number two on the workshop. This problem here is a great introduction to some of the tricks and challenges and skills of doing complex problem solving. And so I gave you this problem because I want you to really get good practice at analyzing what a question is talking about, breaking it down into useful information, and then using that to solve. So I'm not going to do this whole problem, but what I want to do is I want to walk you through getting it set up in case you're having any trouble with it or just to help you get better at general problem solving. So what we're told is we have this train. It starts from rest. It accelerates uniformly. Okay, so keep in mind when you're doing these problems, the vast majority of the physics happens in the reading of the problem and translating that into useful information. So first of all, before we even jump in, the first half sentence, it accelerates uniformly. So we have something with constant acceleration, therefore our equations of motion are applicable. Okay, bonus. So we have a train. Oh, it also starts from rest. Okay, so its initial velocity must be zero. So there's this initial point in time where it starts where we know the initial velocity is zero. Okay. And it travels for a distance of 2.1 kilometers and acquires a velocity of 34 meters per second. So it goes for some distance, which we know. So if we call our initial position zero, again, that's a, that's a variable not given to us, but we can assume it because we know the distance we're told is from the start. And so therefore we know now at this, we'll call this point one. So we have the zero point, point one. At point one, it's moving at 34 meters per second. And it has a position now of 2.1 kilometers, but those aren't SI units. So I'm gonna convert it to meters, which is 2,100 meters. And during this time, it has some uniform acceleration that we don't know. And this amount of time that transpires that we also don't know. So I'm gonna leave those as two variables. Okay, and now it continues moving. So we have a new segment here. I'll draw another segment. Let's call this point two. And so we're now told that the train moves at a constant velocity of 34 meters per second for 340 seconds. Okay, so constant velocity, what does that mean? Well, that tells us that we have an acceleration equal to zero meters per second squared during this time, and that time is given to us, so we'll call this section's time T2, is 430 seconds. And the velocity at the end of this, again, this is another trick, right? We're not told what the velocity is explicitly, but we know that it's at a constant velocity the entire time. So at the end, it must still be going 34 meters per second. And it's now at some new location that we don't know. All right, cool. But we're still not done. Now we're told the train then slows down uniformly. Okay, again, uniform acceleration, meaning that we're going to have our equations of motion be able to be used. So we have another segment here where we're going to some final location, point three. And here we're told we have a uniform acceleration and it says it's 0.065 meters per second squared. But again, another trick here, it slows down at that rate. So it's actually a negative acceleration. So the slows down tells us the direction negative and this just gives us the magnitude. So it's a negative 0.065 meters per second squared and the time it takes to slow down which we can call t3 is something we do not know but we do know it slows down until it comes to a halt so we know that our final velocity here is zero meters per second and we have some new location that we do not know so what we really have here is actually three problems built into one so what you're going to need to do to solve is you have to analyze what happens when you go from point zero to point one, since you have one set acceleration during that time. And then you look at what happens when you go from point one to point two and analyze, since you now have zero acceleration during that time. And then you have to analyze what happens from point two to point three, because you're asked to find ultimately what is X three, this final distance, which is going to be the 2100 meters plus the distance traveled from one to two, which will give you what X2 is, and then plus the distance traveled during the deceleration phase from two to three, and then that gives you the total distance traveled over that whole time. And then for the time, for part B, you need to take T1, add it to 430 seconds, and add the T3 as well. So now you can do your equations of motion. For example, over here, if you wanna find T1, 
we have velocities in position, so use your equation of motion that doesn't have acceleration in it, and you should be able to find the time. Over here, since acceleration is zero, that's easy. Distance is just equal to velocity times time. So we can find the distance traveled during that segment. And then over here, now we don't know position or time, but we do have acceleration. So we can find the distance in the equation without time and then use, find the time using the equation without distance. So I'm going to let you do all of the work here, but hopefully you'll be able to find a total distance traveled that is some number and is box worthy, oh yeah, and find the total time that it takes as well in order to solve and get another box worthy answer. So try that out, let me know if you have any questions, and yeah, keep working hard.